Hello everybody. Good afternoon. Rose here. Today I'm reacting to a video that was put together by a channel called Knock Knock It's Karma and it's called Foodie Beauty Obsession the prequel. Now this video is not very long at all. It's less than 15 minutes long but I've looked at the Knock Knock It's Karma channel I think it deserves more attention and more views, and this video definitely deserves more views, and I wanted to make everybody aware of it because this video is incredibly well laid out, very precise, and it has to do with Foodie Beauty's obsessions with men and her obsessive stalker behavior. So anybody who watches Foodie Beauty, you've all heard her talk about the different men that she has revolving around her and we've all heard the way she interacts with these men and her behavior is obsessive it is controlling it is manipulative and it is definitely obsessive and i'm going to play this video from knock knock, knock it's karma uh, i would like everyone to go to knock knock it's karma's channel after this react is over please give them some love uh, maybe subscribe to the channel leave a comment give them a view because they certainly deserve it because they put together this video incredibly well that lays out booty and her obsessive controlling manipulative behavior very very well so let me just go ahead and share the screen and before we get started there's going to be parts of this video that i have to mute the audio because there's music playing. I don't know if it's copyright or not. So when we get to those parts, I'm going to have to turn down the audio and then just read the text. But uh, this is from Knock Knock, It's Karma. Again, I will leave the link for the original video in the description. Please don't forget to give them some love, uh, give them a comment, give them a like. They certainly deserve it because they worked hard on this video. So let's get to, let's get to, shall we? And we start off with the new obsession arc has officially begun. Okay, I gotta turn down the audio. So there's the intro. Uh, please understand this. Narcissists are severely emotionally stunted, underdeveloped adults, regardless of however high mentally functioning they appear to be. They have the emotional intelligence of an angry, irrational young child. And this has to do with Foodie's new obsession, Tony. So she's going to talk about Tony. Yeah, he told me not to catch feelings. So right off the bat, Tony made his intentions clear. He was very upfront with Chantal. He said, look, this is just fun. Don't catch feelings. Do I think that Tony is actually Natter? Do I think that all of the men she talks about is actually Natter? And she's just coming up with different names and different personas of different guys, just trying to make herself look more desirable or put off the impression that she's highly desired by men. Yeah, I think she's doing that. I think in her head, she wants to be desired by not just one man, but many men. She envisions herself as being a woman that men fight over, that men are running after, and she equates the number of men that run after her with how desirable she is. She equates how much men want her with a sense of self-worth. And Fodi, self-worth is not about how many men desire you or run after you or lust after you. It's about you having your sense of self-worth, putting worth into yourself to where you're adding value to yourself. It has nothing to do with how many men send you messages on Facebook or Instagram or anywhere and they ask to see parts of your body. It has to do with you being a person 
and living your life in such a way that you add value to yourself to the point where you know that you're valuable as a person and you're not looking for the value elsewhere. But that is a life lesson that even at 40 years old or close to 40, you haven't learned that yet. And I don't know how or when that life lesson is going to happen, but it seems to keep missing you or if it's not missing you, you're running away from it. You just, you don't want to work on yourself to add value to yourself. And so you look for your worth in other people. But Tony is saying, look, don't catch feelings. Don't get emotionally wrapped around me. This is just fun. And although you come on camera and said, that's all I'm looking for. I just want to have fun. I want to have the single hot girl summer. There's no denying that you're telling yourself one thing on the outside, but you feel differently on the inside. You want a relationship. You want someone to love you. You want to be committed to someone. You want them committed to you, but you're not willing to work on yourself to be that kind of woman that a man would be proud to be with and introduce to his friends and introduce to his family. You do everything in the world to make the kind of image and reputation that a man would never think of bringing you around anybody that they care about or that they love. Yeah, and you know what? If you're someone, and this is just not for foodie, if you're someone and you're looking for love, you know on the inside that's what you want, and you encounter someone that they tell you right off the bat, don't catch feelings. That means they have no desire to be in a relationship with you. That's not where their head and their soul are at. They're letting you know without saying it outright. I'm not there. I don't want to be there. I'm not willing to explore that. So if that's what you're looking for, you need to keep looking because I'm not that person. So this person, Tony, is telling her, look, I'm not in that headspace. I'm not in that heart space. Don't look at me. Don't look towards me if that's what you want. And yet Foodie hears the message, but she's not listening to the message and setting her sights elsewhere. She wants to keep running after someone that she can't have. That seems to be the pattern with Foodie. Her going after things that she knows she can't have and now are not meant for her. She looks at those things as challenges. She likes to be challenged. Problem is, she looks towards the wrong things and the wrong people to be challenged. There are other things in life that could challenge her that she could go after and it would be positive for her. But running after people that want nothing to do with you that way you're just wasting your energy and your time. I mean, I'm not like obsessed and I'm yes, you are not like in love, but I like him a lot and I want him to like me too. I think he does, but you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm a lot to handle. Like I'm just, yeah, you are very, you know, I'm just a headache. So you just said yourself, you're a lot to handle. You're a headache. So put yourself in the shoes of a man that you're interested in, foodie. Just put yourself in somebody else's shoes. Let's just say, just switch to the other side of the table. If you are a man dealing with a woman who, in their own words, they say, I'm a lot to handle. I'm a headache. Would you want to deal with them? Would you want to get emotionally wrapped around them? No. So since you wouldn't want to do it, don't expect anybody else to do it. And the fact that you like this dude, that's not good enough. Liking somebody does not equal a guaranteed relationship. But you're operating these days under the premise of, hey, I put on my wig and I put my makeup on and I took a shower. So something better happen or I'm going to bitch. 
if I don't get what I want out of somebody, I'm going to get revenge. I'm going to get on my channel. I'm going to talk all kinds of crap about this person. I'm going to make up stuff about them just out of complete vengeance because I put high expectations on somebody, expectations that they did, they did not know about, that they did not agree to. And because I did that, because I expected things to go a certain way and I did not consult the person that those expectations involved because I did that. I, I got in my own head and I went down that path by myself because they didn't follow me. I'm going to get revenge. You seem to have a pattern with that foodie. You think that you can walk into somebody's life and they're supposed to give you whatever it is you want. And you seem to forget that people have their own free will. They have their own sense of self. And what you want is not necessarily what somebody else wants. And if what you want involves another person, then you should involve that other person. You should ask, what do you want in life? Do you want love? Do you want to be with me? If your expectations have to do with another person, then you should involve them. And if they have a different point of view, you should respect that, respect their boundaries and back off and go look elsewhere for what you're looking around for. Okay, so there's more music. Stalkers share a remarkable capacity to rationalize, minimize and excuse their behavior. Yep, they think it's okay. So here we go again. Tony's the one person for now. Yeah, but what about Mr. Coffee? What about Mr. Moto Guy? What about all these men, Mr. Mercedes? So I guess Tony was the one, but now we've got all these other different characters that have been floating around. I'm confused, Chantal. You're a single woman and you're looking for the one, right? You're looking for the one. How can you pursue the one if you've got so many around you? How could how can you give your attention fully to one person if it's divvied up between several men? How is that possible? Or are you pursuing these several men because you're trying to up your chances of finding the one? You don't just want to put all your chips on one number. So let's have all these different men to up the chances of maybe one of them might be him. Run, Tony, run! Don't say that, Kristen! So, I think I'm just gonna stick with Tony because I know, like, I'm comfortable with him now. And he has his own place and stuff. Until I find... Until I uh, find somebody, if, if he doesn't want to play that way, you know? So basically, you're saying, I'm going to stick with this guy for now until I find something better. But Tony already told you, look, don't catch feelings. Don't get wrapped around me. He already said that. He already established the boundaries. You're just not respecting them. You, you seem to be under the impression you can go past someone's boundaries. She's clearly mentally preparing to challenge boundaries. And what I would like to add to this video that Knock Knock did, I remember watching some Chantal live streams where she said that she just has a little habit where she'll meet a guy and she'll put on a better version of herself for a while until she feels like she's in with that person and then she shows who she really is. And another disturbing thing that I saw, she did a live stream and this had to do with Natter. She said something that I've never heard a single person in my life say, except for her. She said, 
I just have to get into his house. Those of you that watch Chantal, you guys remember her hearing her say that? She was obsessed with getting in Natter's house. Like I've talked to many single people. I have never heard another single person make that comment that way. Like I have to get in their house. Why do you have to get into that person's house? Is it because if you get in their house, you, in your head, you equate that to your in? that you're getting that much closer to them, like you're moving ever closer to that person. Moving close to a person has to do with more than just walking in their house, Chantal. But Chantal, she's all about challenging boundaries and breaking them down and breaking people down to where she gets what she wants from them. Okay, more. Honestly, Maya, we haven't talked about exclusive or anything. Yeah, hold on a second. He said no feelings, Chantal. No feelings means no love, no relationship. Nothing. It's just a booty call. Maybe I'll talk about that this weekend. If she comes back with an abuse story this weekend, you'll know this talk didn't go the way she wanted. Something else I want to bring up for everyone. This happened in the, I forget which one it was, but it was a stream that Chantal did over at Natter's Trap House. She was in the bedroom. She had a sheet wrapped around her. And somebody asked her the question. Have you ever thought about if Natter gets another sugar mama and dumps you? Have you ever thought about that? And she said, I think about that all the time. And then she leaned in close to the camera and she said, I've got a plan. I'm not as stupid as you guys think. Trust and believe something about an Aries. When she made that comment, it, it clicked inside of me that this woman, she already had a plan in place that if Natter ever tried to get away from Chantal, that she was going to use his criminal past against him. She would essentially blackmail him to be with her. And look what happened with her going to the cops. I, I you know, she was going to use that as leverage. And so she did use it as leverage later on. You know, one minute she's fine with Natter. The next minute, if if she's mad at him, she'll come out and say that he abused her. I mean, this is the way she plays. She's not about dating people, getting to know people, trying to find an honest, true, emotional, spiritual connection with somebody. It's about manipulating her way into somebody's life and getting into a position where she can control them and by controlling them in whatever way is possible, that means they can't escape. And I think we can all agree that one of the biggest controlling factors about Chantal is her money. She'll use her money as a lure and she'll come off as being so sweet. Oh, let me just help you. Let me pay your bills. Let me pay your rent. You don't have to go to work today. She sets out the honey trap. And then once a guy falls in it and He's got no other means for himself. She takes advantage. And then once he relies entirely on her for money, like where can he go? What can he do? The only way out of that honey trap is for him to get his own job, get his own money. And then he has a way to escape. Once upon a time, Pete had his own job, had his own money. Sean Tall kept telling him, quit your job and just do YouTube with me. He resisted for a long time, but then once he uh, quit his job and he started relying entirely on Chantal, she knew she had him. And she was free to treat Pete the way she wanted, and she knew he wasn't going to go anywhere. You know, like her honey traps are toxic and deceptive. Chantal is not about doing things for people out of kindness or love or generosity it's about 
putting people in a position to where they owe her. She's got leverage over them. And whatever she does for you, she will hold over your head forever. And so that's the way she plays. It's all about just configuring things to where she will control you. She's in machine. And I don't like being in machine. Okay. So why are you in machine? So I am only in machine because I went to near Cornwall to see my family and we went to a that's why I went super like it was early in the morning. That's why I was awake and that's why it was in the morning. Because that's when my family was available. It's a weekday, people work, we were we went to this like sunflower field thing and then we had breakfast at this diner. It was a nice day. I went for a, it was a pretty long walk actually. We walked for like an hour total. So now I can close my girls again. Yay. Oops. Manipulation incoming. Of course. Of course. So, okay, anyways, I'm so back to business so okay i want to walk you through it okay so oh so they even gave a map nice knock knock nice so cornwall's here where her family's at there's was sheen okay montreal okay Okay, what else? Already halfway to Montreal. So, you know what? I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I would love to shut this fucker up. Uh, but don't you shut him up in Lachine, not Montreal. Yeah, because she didn't go to Montreal. Uh, I'm so sorry about the music, y'all. <laughs> I don't want to get knocked around for the monetization. I call the Lachine police station and they're like, I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to see like uh, if anybody has a case open against me because, uh, you know, uh, I should probably not. My honest opinion, there are no cases. There's no harassment. Natter relies on Chantal for money, even now. Not too long ago, he got groceries. He didn't even know it was in the bag. Like somebody ordered groceries for him. Somebody bought him $500 in groceries. Who do we know that makes that kind of money? Foodie. And she's still paying the phone bill. She never cut off his phone. She's still seeing him. She's still talking to him. She's still giving him money. God knows the, uh, the Natter channel is not making as much money. And that's why she keeps talking about him on her channel, trying to give him a little bit of press to try to help his views, although it's not working anymore. But she's still supporting him. She says, I want to shut him down. Okay, so why haven't you struck his channel? You're a vengeful, wrathful person, right? Why haven't you struck his channel? It's because you're still supporting him. It's obvious you, he, and Dee Dee, you're all in cahoots together. Everybody can see it clear as day because he's going after everybody but you. You're going after everybody but him. Y'all are making it glaringly obvious what's up. And, and they're like, well, you have to come in the police station with ID. What is this guy waiting for? Um, I'm like, okay, so I figure, you know what? Okay, so let's recap. She called the Lachine PD 
to see if she had charges. They told her she had to bring ID and come in. So she figures, why the heck not? But the police department she needs to visit is in Lachine, not Montreal. At the beginning of the clip, she told us, I'm in Lachine and I don't like being Lachine, okay? She later tells us she just left the Lachine police department and had the detective and left a message. Let's see why she's really going to Montreal. Maybe I can see somebody at the same time. You know, 20 or something? 20 or something? Anyway. Oh, and uh, there's a clip floating around on Twitter and also online. I forget what channel. But Natter was saying that Chantal was camped out in front of the apartment where Natter and Didi are saying that she was actually camped out in front of the apartment. And if y'all think back, way, way back when he was at the trap house, there was talk about Chantal camping out in her car in front of the trap house, blaring music or something. So this, her camping out in front of Natter's place is not something new. Uh, she's still mentally wrestling with the idea of seeing him. This is the part of the rush of the high that accompanies this behavior. Yeah, Chantal, she just, she likes doing things that are bad. She gets off on doing things she's not supposed to do. That's why even though she could do positive content for her channel, she doesn't want to. Y'all remember when she went to Cuba, people were giving her the positive reinforcement. She was bored with it. She wanted to be in the middle of drama and controversy and shock. And so she just went off the rails in Cuba. She could have had a fabulous vacation in Cuba and she didn't. She spent more than half of the time raging at Natter, raging at Didi, having a meltdown but she really gets a kick out of being bratty, being combative, uh, being rebellious. Uh, she wants the rush that comes from doing something she's not supposed to do. Um. Yeah, so I'm just driving downtown, downtown Montreal. Why? I pretty much blocked every single man that I was supposed to come into contact with recently, including the one for tomorrow. I don't want to see any other dudes. I think I'm just going to like stick with Tony. Okay. Does he know you're becoming exclusive to him? No, he doesn't. Did you ask him? Booty. Hey, do you want to be exclusive? Do you want to go steady? Do you just want to be a couple? You see, that's the problem. You make yourself exclusive to somebody. You choose to do that on your own. And then when that person isn't exclusive to you, you get angry because you made a decision, but you did not consult the other person and ask them how they felt and what they want. You just assume that because you're becoming exclusive, they should automatically do it too. And then when they don't, you lash out in complete rage. You dox them, you say what their name is, you talk crappy about them on your channel. You are a vengeful, wrathful person. And more than half the time when you're vengeful and wrathful, you have no real reason to be. Your vengeance and your wrath has to do with decisions and choices that you make that you shouldn't make on your own. You make decisions about relationships and people without consulting the people that it includes. And does he know the rage that will ensue if those feelings aren't reciprocated? No, I seriously doubt. Like, how can anybody 
come close to imagining the vengeance and the wrath that Flutie Beauty has. How could you see that coming? How could you possibly envision that just sleeping with somebody or talking to somebody can lead to being exposed on YouTube, being doxxed, possibly family members and friends being doxxed? I mean, who, who could have possibly imagined that? Nobody can. If you're on your side saying, hey, don't catch feelings, this isn't serious, and you think you're making yourself clear and you're being upfront, you can't imagine that the person you're talking to, they're not getting it through their head. They don't want to hear it. And if you don't give them what they want to get back at you, they're going to completely drag you on YouTube and that might go beyond just you. It might involve your family, your friends, your job. You just don't know. For that reason, she's a walking nightmare to anybody who happens to be single. Yeah. I'm not going to see Tony today, though, because he's working. And I don't want to, like, I don't know. She's wrestling with the idea. I don't want to bug him when he's working. Okay, this is a part of the rush to the high that accompanies this behavior. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna like go home. I deleted, I blocked off. Uh, she, so she's sitting in downtown Montreal. Why are you sitting in Montreal, Foodie? All the extra men, except for Tony. I'm keeping just Tony. Yeah, but the problem is, he's not just keeping you. You might be the only one, you might be one of many, but you're locking yourself down for a dude that's not committed to you. Do you see the problem? Do you see how you're setting yourself up for failure? That you're committing to someone and they're not committed to you, and then you have the audacity to get angry at them because they're not committing themselves to you. You actually have the the gall to be mad because you promised yourself something, but they didn't promise you anything. She caught feelings and is getting lost in the sauce, but that seems to be a, a problem with her. She says, I don't want feelings. I don't want relationships. I don't want to be in love. But when she says that, she's lying to herself. You know what I think, y'all? I think she wants love. She wants a relationship. She doesn't want to put the work to make herself into a person of value. She doesn't want to put the work in to make a relationship work. So she tells herself, I can do without love. I can do without it. I can be just fine sleeping around. But she's telling herself a lie when she says that to herself. She wants someone to love her. But foodie, you're never going to have that if you don't love yourself first. So you can sit there and lie and say, I don't want love. I don't want a relationship. But yet, why is it whatever guys you're talking to, when they say, I don't want a relationship, that pisses you off. I mean, if neither one of you wants a relationship, everything should be fine. But if you're saying it to yourself, and the other person is saying, hey, I agree, let's play. And then you start to catch feelings. Can you get mad at the other person? No, because they came at you honest. They were straightforward. They were very plain about what they wanted and what they expected. It was you that made the water muddy. You wanted more than they were offering. But yet you feel entitled to grab at something that you have no business having with that person. Honestly, I think that she wants love, but... She knows she can't get love because she's not working on herself. So this is a case, y'all, of just taking 
what she can get because she knows that's all there is for now. There's nobody around that loves her, cares for her, wants to love her, care for her. And she knows, considering the fact she's not working on herself, that sleeping around is as good as she's going to get. Until she starts working on herself, that that's all that men are going to offer her is a hit it and quit it kind of situation. Oops. Thank you. He works really hard, so I don't want to bug. Still mentally wrestling with the idea of bugging Tony. But I'm like, but I'm see him this weekend. I feel like I have to be in love with somebody. It's like you don't though. Oh, I feel like I have to be in love with somebody. Why? Why do you have to be in love with somebody? You're equating your worth to a relationship. I mean, I'm not like obsessed and I'm not like in love. Or maybe I don't. Maybe I should just work on. Read her body language. The thought of, of just the thought of working on herself exhausts her. That's another reason why I think she just busies herself running after men, thinking about men, because as long as she's distracting herself with male attention, or wanting male attention. She doesn't have to pay attention to what she should be doing and that's working on herself. On myself, I guess. That's what I really need to do. You do, work on yourself. What's that old saying? If you build it, they will come. If you make yourself a person of worth, if you add value to yourself, you're working on yourself, you're making yourself happier, you're being more positive, you will radiate that kind of, I got it together, I'm put together well, energy, and then people will want to be around you. You don't have to work so hard to chase after people, Chantal. You got to chase after people hard when you don't have value, when you have no sense of self-worth or self-respect. It's all you've been doing for the past two years, running after men, running hard after them, paying them for their time because you're not willing to stand still and work on you. Not Tony? Why? What's wrong with Tony? Tony don't want you like that. That's what. Montreal Daily. Tony Gonzana. Weren't you just saying earlier today that you don't want to date men and have sex and focus on yourself? Yeah. Yeah. I deleted, I blocked all the extra men except for Tony. I'm keeping just Tony. Yeah, but he's not keeping you exclusive. See the problem? I want to. Okay, listen carefully and read through the lines. Find one person. So, I think I'm just gonna stick with Tony because I know, like, I'm comfortable with him now. And he has his own place and stuff. Uh huh. Until I find. Until I uh, find somebody, if, if he doesn't want to like that way, you know. Tony's the one person for now. I want to. I want to. I want. And you just said you weren't in love or obsessed with him. So you're trying to set things in motion, Chantal. You're trying to steer Tony towards being in love with you. But if the love is real, you don't have to steer somebody towards love. They will want to be in love with you. You see, love is not about control or manipulation. It's about two people having a mutual love and respect for each other. It's about connection. And those are things you cannot buy. They either are there or they're not. But you, you think you can buy those things. You think you can bully and manipulate and control your way into somebody's life. And for that, you will never find what you want.
I want Tony to like, I want to marry Tony and I want to travel the world with Tony. He works really hard, so I don't want to bug him. Like, yeah, he told me not to catch feelings. Boom! There it is. So you want to marry this dude? You want to travel the world with him? And he says, "Don't catch feelings. Don't catch feelings." He was crystal clear saying that. So I kind of feel shitty about that. It's kind of like, uh... No, it's not too late. If somebody says, don't catch feelings, that's when you let go. If you're looking for something more than just the hit it and quit it, you let go. Because continuing on with that person, you know, it's just going to get emotionally messy. I mean, I'm not like obsessed and I'm not like in love, but I like him a lot and I want him to like me too. Well, he, he, he likes you, just not in the way you want him to like you. And he's not attached to you to the point where he'd say something like that. And something tells me he said that to you because he kind of picked up on the fact that you were getting attached. And he was just basically trying to put your head in the right place before it went into the wrong place. I think he does, but he doesn't. He's, if he says that to you, he, he's not into you. Okay. He doesn't. No feelings. None. <laughs> None, Chantal. Get over it. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not Tony to like, I want to marry Tony. But you can't. He don't want to marry you, girl. I don't want to travel the world with Tony. Uh, all right, so this is the same way Natter started. It's all the, it's the way they all start, right? So remember what I said. She was talking to Natter. She liked Natter a whole lot. Then she came on camera and said, I just have to get into his house. I just have to get into his house. So she got into his house. And she started leaving stuff over there. Why? Because she wanted to have a reason to call him and to contact him. And she would make a big deal about whatever it was she left over at his house. Y'all remember all those live streams? Oh, he's got my CPAP and, and I bought that and I bought that. She deliberately buys things and leaves things over there. So she's got a reason to go back. You know, she leaves little anchors at different people's houses. Y'all remember. The whole situation with her and BB, she moved out of BB's place and she still got her stuff over there. Like for the longest, she would call over there whenever she wanted to see BB. She had her stuff over there that gave her the perfect reason to call BB, although she should have left BB alone and let him live his life. But she's got the same patterns for all the men in her life and she doesn't want to break them. No, I didn't. I want to know. I want proof of stalking right now. Reaching out to you, messaging you. You were messaging us. Uh, let's get the messages up then. I want proof that you were not talking to me at all. That you were not telling me anything. I want proof of that. I want to see both sides of all the messages. Guaranteed, because were you telling me, go away, I don't love you anymore? No. Were you telling me, I don't want to see you anymore? No. I want to see that. You want my honest opinion about Foodie and Natter? I think they're both obsessed with each other. Honestly. She won't stop talking about him. He won't stop talking about her. She watches his live streams. He watches her live streams. They'll sit there like a couple of fools and fight with each other through their monitors involving an audience when they can both easily pick up their phones and have private conversations and do it that way, which is what normal adult people do. If you want a relationship with somebody, whether it's a love relationship or a friendship, 
communication is key. And yet, for some reason, they both are such narcissists, they need to make their conversations and turn it into spectacle. They're both obsessed with each other. But that does not excuse Chantal and her stalker ways, her creepy stalker ways. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. This video is ruining anything. You've ruined education. They're, they're all full of fun. Her car outside. Now turn it off again. The photo of her car at Natters is available online. So, yes, yeah, somebody, I guess, took a picture of her car at Natters. Like I said, there was this big story that she camped out in front of his house. Creepy, Chantal. Creepy. Creepy. How, like, we, a year and a half ago, like, at the very beginning, when I drove to see where he was, to see if he was lying. So, there we go. I, you know what? I also, I'm, I'm thinking about so many instances where Chantal was like, I'm like, what are you doing? I do remember the live stream where she got all angry at Natter because he called her and she wasn't picking up the phone. And then he got mad at her. And so when she was calling, he wasn't picking up the phone. And so she got in her car on live stream. There was a series of live streams. She got in her car. She drove to his house. She was peeking in the windows and trying the door. I mean, I'm sorry, Chantal, that's just creepy behavior. All because he wasn't picking up the phone, all because she was wondering, is there another girl there? I knocked at his door. It's not illegal to go and knock at someone's fucking door. The fact that you drove all the way over there just because you were like, who's he with? Who's he talking to? Obsessive, ma'am. Not normal. And when you didn't answer, I fucking left. Big deal. Uh, that's not stalking. That's creepy behavior. Oh. Showing up to someone's house you had just met unannounced to check up on them and make sure they weren't lying when there wasn't even a relationship yet is something that I would consider stalking. At the very least, it was far too soon for that possessive, obsessive behavior about where you were asshole because you said you told me you were at someone's house you left your phone at home and uh you know chantal he was never in a serious relationship with you and even if he were hypothetically speaking even if even if natter had been in a serious relationship with you that kind of behavior is unacceptable anyway acting like somebody's warden watching their every move, trying to control their every move, trying to police who they're talking to and where they go. That's negative behavior in a relationship anyway. And it's, it's unacceptable, but it's really, 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 really unacceptable. If you're not committed to somebody, nor are they to you, you're trying to control someone that don't belong to you. Then you retract just now saying that just so you to make your stalking case that you were at your girl, you got your exes, looking up the window, watching me go nuts over you. So you get sick joy out of this, you fucking sick prick. Again, you're just proving yourself. And you got sick joy of chasing someone that doesn't want you. In the very beginning, he says he does not want you. And you kept pursuing him anyway. Because Chantal, you're a person that you, I don't think you've ever heard the word no in your life. And so somebody's standing up to you for the first time and saying, no. You're not going to get what you want. I think that intrigued you. And you looked at that as a challenge. And you're like, I'm going to win this challenge. And so the last year or so of pursuing Natter, it's not so much about the love thing. It's the fact that you're such a narcissist and you're so controlling that your ego can't possibly deal with the idea of not getting what you want that you will keep pursuing whatever it is you want, no matter how much it costs you, just so you can say, I won. 
And what exactly have you won with Natter? First of all, he's not worth winning. He's not a quality person. But all this pursuing of Natter and running back and forth to Natter and talking to Natter, what does that cost you? Your channel is tanking because of your pursuit and your obsession with him. He's an absolute piece of shit. He's not doing any of So do you really want to keep doing that? This is my goal here, is to address this and make you look better. Okay. When your stalker is offended because you're offended about being stalked, <laughs> right? Oh, and this is like a much earlier live stream. This is like classic Fody Beauty right here. Classic. Right for you guys. When I would crush on a guy, I would crush hard, but that was psycho. The, and this was before Natter. This is way before Natter, she's saying this. Still are. Like fatal attraction. <laughs> we know. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. So, two of my victims. Victims? Nice choice of words. I think I was about 14. Yeah, so I heard, I've heard this story before, that when Chantal was very young, that she was pursuing a couple of neighbor boys to the point where the father told her, look, you better leave my sons alone. I'm calling the cops. So this behavior of hers has been going on since her teenage years. You know, she just gets fixated on somebody and she just doesn't want to hear the word no. And, and she'll pursue them, trying to break them down, trying to get her way. This has been going on for years. I was living at home. And up the street, I had one of my best friends. We hung out at her house a lot. And I really liked hanging out at her house because she lived across the street from his two brothers. Uh, they were twins. Right. This is a story that I heard. And I had the biggest loss for that one. Oops. To be continued. So there's going to be another prequel. So I'd like to thank Knock Knock It's Karma for making this absolutely excellent video. I can't wait for part two, but I encourage everyone on my channel to check out Knock Knock It's Karma. I'm gonna leave a link for the original video in the description. Please, please go over there. Give them a like, give them a sub, leave a comment. Tell them how much you appreciate the video, how well together it was put together. I uh, just wanted to react to this because uh, it just seems like with Chantal, her obsessive ways are continuing and that's lead to her spiraling. So thank you guys for watching. Remember, please check out Knock Knock It's Karma. Uh, it, and Thomas said hi. <laughs> Y'all have a good day and please take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.